Let us pray. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, when your disciples and friends deserted and left you, remained alone in the hands of sinful men, like a most gentle lamb within the jaws of a ravenous wolf. Strengthen my excessive weakness and confirm my too great unstableness by the support of your grace, and join me to yourself with the bonds of love, that I may neither have no wish nor the power ever to depart or separate myself from you. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who allowed yourself to be led around bound by an armed band and taken to Annas, allowing yourself to be stood before him as though you were a common criminal or robber. O unspeakable gentleness of my Redeemer, look, while they take and drag and thrust you forward, you uttered not a single word of complaint or murmur or word of resistance, but in silence you followed them wherever they led you, obeying their commands and permitted their wanton injuries to you. Grant, O Lord, that these your virtues may shine in me to the everlasting glory of your name. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, King of heaven and earth, who in great humility, as poor and needy and of no account, was stood before the proud high priest and most sweetly endured the dreadful blow which his impious servant put upon you. Restrain, I beg you, in me all outbreak of anger and passion. Suppress all acts of indignation and quench with me all, within me all desire of revenge, that when I am provoked by injury I may not be disturbed, I may, not, may offer no resistance, may suffer no disquiet, but endure everything with a quiet mind. May I even repay evil with good. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who permitted himself to be led bound in a shameful manner to Caiaphas, that you might deliver us from the penalty of eternal death, restoring to us true liberty. Make me most ready to endure every reproach and all contempt for your name's sake. Grant that in the very middle of ridicule and outrage I may give you thanks with a perfect heart and by means of these trials may grow and increase more and more in your love. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, when three times denied by your Apostle Peter, mercifully turned and looked upon him with kindness and brought him to repentance and holy sorrow for his sin. In like manner, may you turn upon me also your eye of mercy and love, that I may weep over my past sins with the tears of true penitence and may never again commit them. May I never be found sinning against your goodness in word or deed. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who stood before the elders and the people of the Jews with a calm countenance and humble look, who did not refuse to be falsely accused and to suffer many injuries. Give me grace never to say an untrue word or to falsely accuse my neighbour, but that I may bear with all quietness of heart the calumnies that are heaped upon me. Casting all my troubles upon you, may I always in silence look for the grave and consolation at your hands. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who when Caiaphas the high priest adjured you by the name of God, declared the truth and proclaimed yourself the Son of God, and did not refuse to be counted by him and the rest who stood by as a blasphemer. May I fully abhor this contempt and offence against you. May in I in every place reverence the, respect, the presence of your divinity and majesty. May I think of you, adore, praise and love you, above all things, for ever and for ever. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall sing your praise.
A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 11. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb four days already. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, so many of the Jewish people of the region had come to Martha and Mary to console them over the loss of their brother. And so when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary remained in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will grant you. Jesus replied, Your brother will come back to life again. Martha said, I know he will come back to life again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if he dies, and the one who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She replied, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who comes into the world. When she had said this, Martha went and called her sister Mary, saying privately, The teacher is here and is asking for you. So when Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still in the place where Martha had come out to meet him. Then the people who were with Mary in the house, consoling her, saw her get up quickly and go out. They followed her, because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mar Mary came to the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the people who had come with her weeping, he was intensely moved in spirit and greatly distressed. He asked her, Where have you laid him? They replied, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And thus the people who had come to mourn said, Look how much he loved him. But some of them said, This is the man who caused the blind man to see. Couldn't he have done something to keep Lazarus from dying? Jesus, intensely moved again, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave, and a stone was placed across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. But Martha, the sister of the deceased, replied, Lord, by this time the body will have a bad smell, because he has been buried four days. Jesus replied, Didn't I tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone. Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you that you have listened to me. I know that you always listen to me, but I said this for the sake of the crowd standing around here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he shouted in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The one who had died came out, his feet and hands bound up with strips of cloth, with a cloth wrapped around his face. Jesus said to them, Unwrap him and let him go. Then many of the people who had come with Mary and had seen the things that Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and reported to them what Jesus had done. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Jews wanted a sign, and so here it was. The resurrection of Jesus could not have been clearer proof of the authority of Jesus or his mission, and yet we are told at the end of the reading, some still refused to accept what they had seen 
and went off to plot against Jesus. The miracle was, however, more for the benefit of the disciples, to give them the strength and reassurance they would need for what was to lie ahead over the coming weeks, to affirm them in their faith, even though there would be momentary periods of crisis. After his own resurrection, Jesus would go on to tell Thomas that those who believe, even though they have not seen with their own eyes, will be especially blessed. Of the two sisters, we remember that Mary was the one of action, the one who believed in getting on and getting things done, and in speaking her mind while Mary was the one given to quiet prayer and thoughtfulness. Despite sending word to Jesus that their brother was seriously ill, Jesus had not come, and so Lazarus had died and had been buried. The house now was busy with friends and relatives who had come from all over the region to pay their respects to the two sisters, and no doubt they were well occupied with all the hospitality. Nevertheless, Martha was driven. The moment she heard that Jesus was finally coming, she could not contain herself and went down the road to intercept him. There would surely have been some mixed emotions within her at this point, not least a little anger and frustration with Jesus. It is perhaps telling that the first thing we are told of is that she said an implied rebuke for his tardiness. If you had been here, Lazarus, our brother and your friend, would not have died. Then we might think almost as a form of afterthought. She qualified it by saying that he had it in his power to do whatever he wanted. When Jesus replied that Lazarus would come back to life, it is quite clear that Martha truly believed this, but only that he would come back to life on Judgment Day. She did not expect Lazarus to come out of the grave and return to the house, and that life would continue as before. Jesus then directly challenged her faith as a precursor to what would happen next. Then we have the beautiful confession of faith from Martha that should be on all our lips all of the time. Is this a statement that we can all say in complete sincerity and adoration. Yes, Lord, you are the Christ, God's only Son, who came into the world to save us and all men. We truly love you and believe in you, always and in all things. Let us pray. Stir up, we beseech you, O Lord, the wells of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.